All right, show and tell time. We have with us JMB Bank. They're back with us inside the Money Classroom. We have Retail Banking Officer Sheena Watson joining us. Welcome, Sheena. Big up yourself. Big up, big up. Thank you, Keisha. Nice. You. All right. So Omar shared all of his tips, right? He's a mortgage broker, so he's able to talk to bank, private lender, private company, anywhere the deal there, he finds it for his clients, right? Mm -hmm. But I know as well, JMB Bank has a similar vein. You work actively with clients to find that mortgage deal for them. So let's talk a little bit about different mortgage options that JMB Bank offers. All right. Thank you again, Keisha, for having me. Uh, I just want to step back a little bit first before I jump into that. Uh, when our clients are thinking about mortgages, we always want them to be prepared, Keisha. And by yes. preparation, we ask them to always get pre-qualified. Because getting pre-qualified gives us an idea as to what price range they can look for or which area they can look into when they're purchasing their home. So once they know, once we know what they qualify for, we, we sit down with them, we start to have a conversation because in the event a client only qualifies, so after we look at their income and we look at their expenses, they only qualify for 30 million. Now, you know, Keisha, that 30 million can't really, may not be able to get you the dream home that you want. So we're able to have the conversation with them, let the clients know that sometimes you may have to reduce the credit card debt, you may have to close a particular loan in order for you to qualify for a little more. So now that we know how much you qualify for, we take our time and we guide you into what else needs to be done for you to be able to access this loan. All right. So you work with it, right? Because at the end of the day, we want, you're saying we want the clients to walk away with something. Mm -hmm. so you're going to offer a little waste. And I say, well, you know, 30 million is what you qualify for now. As you know, them said 30 million can't buy all of stony, can't buy nothing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you need to put a little more on it. And you, you right. talk about different strategies. That strategies. Can be done. Right. All right. So everybody loves the interest rates, Sheena. Everybody talks about it all the time because that's that's the primary focus, even though you know Omar said it. He said, Look here, it's not just the interest rate. Don't watch the interest rate only, watch the other features and the terms of the loan. But you offer rates, so I'm gonna ask you, what are the rates like now that are being offered? All right, Keisha. All righty. As is now, um, our mortgage rate is eight point five percent. That's what we're offering now. But importantly, as Omar said, it's not only the rate. Um, being able to contact your office at any point in time, also being able to hold your hand along the way are some of the things are some of the benefits that you look out for other than just the rate um we're able to offer a one-stop shop here at jmmbu and we can talk about a little bit more where we guide you in terms of how to get your life insurance and how to get your property insurance so when we don't look at just the rate at jmmb there's no penalty for early payment so there's no penalty for closing out the, the loan early you can make lump sum payments you know, the, the, it has some perks to it. So if you only watch the rate, you may feel like in comparison to others, we may be a little bit above the market. But 8.5, as we currently offer, is a competitive rate. And we know what we offer in the package. So our rate is... is yes, she tell them. So Omar laid the foundation for you. Omar said, don't watch the rate. Watch Not the just mortgage. The rate. And then you come on now and say, look here, we stand behind our rate. We know we're rate, but we also know that our terms are very favorable. Mm -hmm. So don't watch the 8.5. Watch the terms that come with it. And I see All you right. do it, huh? So yes. you know. <laughs> right? So Patricia has a question for you. Is the 8.5 a fixed rate or a variable rate? Because Patricia, I tell you, star student, you know, she know our team. Is it a fixed rate? And maybe we can go into the difference between them. Is it a fixed or a variable rate? And you can explain. The, the fixed rate would be that we give you one rate and it's throughout the life of the loan. But if we're going to guarantee you that rate uh, for the life of the loan, it means that we really have to um, incur in it or add to it few inflation. So it will be more than what the variable rate is like. As is now, JMB is offering variable interest rates on our mortgages. And as we know, with variable, it means that the interest rate may change over time, depending on market conditions. What that mean, though? 
what 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 is depending on market because people are on market. They're gonna what market conditions? How right. does it change the rate? Yes. Oh, okay. So as all right, so what's happening now? We find that um, policy rate, which is set by BOJ, is seven percent. So that's a benchmark in terms of what we really um, give on our loan rates. So um, before, I think what's up to last year where the policy rate was a little lower, that's the benchmark we use in terms of how we're going to price a mortgage. So when the rate was lower than 7%, we were able to offer mortgages at like 6.9%. But when that policy rate changes and it increases like to 7%, it means that the bank now has to do some readjustment and also increase the rate that we're currently offering. So it, that's, okay. that's those cause the rate to vary. Right. So it's not really JMB are raised the rates. It's, no. it's driven coming all the way from BOJ. And you have to make your adjustment based on That's that. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. So when persons are considering mortgage, I see it. You mentioned home insurance, life insurance. Mm -hmm. Do we need all of that just for one little mortgage? Yes, yes, Keisha. So we know that the mortgage is a significant lifestyle milestone. And of course, you want to achieve the home. But there are certain other factors that comes with it that at JMB, we really try to hold your hand in terms of what's coming next. Because first of all, after you know how much you qualify for, you have to find some money to pay towards the deposit, to pay your fees, and you also have to find money to pay your lawyer. So in addition to those monies, JMB takes must guide you in terms of protecting the property because both the bank and you have an interest in the property. So we're going to put a life insurance for on your on yourself. You're going to have a life insurance and you're also going to have property insurance. And they're very important and they serve two important purposes. Let's start with the property insurance. With the property insurance, we're insuring the house that's where we're going to have as a collateral. And we insure it in terms of in the event there's any fire, any natural disaster, hurricane, you name it. Once the property or if the property is demolished, then the life insurance, the property insurance, I'm sorry, will kick in and be able to reinstate the property. So you're not paying a mortgage and, 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 and there's no property. So the, the, the peril insurance will tend to reinstate or build back the property's original state. The life insurance is also very important because in the event of your untimely death, the proceeds or the settlement from the life insurance is able to close out the loan. So you're not leaving behind a loan for your siblings or even your spouse to pay. So people say the loan dies with you. And that's the essence of it. We're really trying to look out for you so you don't leave this obligation onto another family member. So, so yes. Sheena, mm -hmm. Sheena, pause there a second. Let's let's talk about the, the loan die with you because there's a big misconception out there that I can take on a mortgage, buy properties. When I die, nobody has to pay back the mortgage. The house is now free. It's just free and you take it and it's free. That's uh -huh. what is understood by the loan die with you. But let's debunk it. Let's clear the air for everybody. What does it really mean for the loan to die with you? What has to happen? Right. Very important, um, Keisha. Can you imagine that was it? Um, there, but that's not the case. So what really has to happen, just repeating that the loan must be insured. You must have life insurance. So the life insurance, you'll be insured for a certain amount. And it's usually for the tune of the mortgage. So it means that in the event you die, the proceeds from the life insurance that is the money that we will use to close the loan. Once the loan is closed, that is when people say the loan dies with you because the proceed from the life insurance would have been able to use to liquidate the loan. So you must have life insurance for the loan to die with you. Other than that, it would mean that the, 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 the applicant or the next of kin would have to continue paying on the mortgage or it means that you'll have to sell the property in an attempt to liquidate the loan if there's no life insurance. So it's not a free house, Keisha. And who will sell the property? The family? The family can sell it, or the bank can assist with the, the selling. The bank can come in and say, look here, 
if you're not we need our money, we are yeah. selling. So it is always important to protect your assets. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of work. We're building wealth. We're on our financial journey. We can't make it go to waste. Correct. So, if, Correct. so we need property insurance, you're saying, and we also need life insurance mm -hmm. yes. while we're getting the mortgage. Right. And JMB has an insurance broker, so we're able to provide it with quotations on those. All right. We have, a, we have another question from our star student. Patricia is asking, does the property insurance increase as the property appreciates? Because she figure, well, if real estate increases over time and I bought the property for 10 million last year and I have life insurance for 10 million, should I now increase my life insurance as the property value go? All right. So in the valuation report, there are separate um, values. You'll see the market value of the property and you'll also see the value to be to reinstate the value. They're separated in the valuation report, itemized. So if along the way you find that based on the area um, of, the, of the property, even though the value go up, the value in terms of the amount to reinstate the property, if that doesn't go up, then the insurance amount doesn't go up because it is the value based on the reinstatement cost. That is where you pay the life insurance. That is how the property insurance is priced based on that value, the reinstatement cost. So oh, you may not, not necessarily market. mean, no, not on the market value, on the reinstatement cost, which is separately listed in the valuation report. See there? Yeah, for no other things, right? Because a lot of people think, oh, market price going up. But JMB Bank is saying, we don't care about market price. Mm -hmm. We're looking at reinstatement value for insurance purposes mm -hmm. because you're looking at if there's fire, flood, or any damage, what does it cost to reinstate? You don't really care that the house going up in value out mm -hmm. of the street on the market. We, we care. We care what I'm just saying in terms of reinstating the property. That's the value that's most important, not the market value. We don't price it from that. Important to know. And then what if we have a joint mortgage and then one of the person dies? Christine has that question. Right. So we would have had, if it's two applicants, then both applicants are required to have life insurance. And both of them will have life insurance for the value of the mortgage. So if one person dies, then the insured amount will be able to use to liquidate the loan. So when we ask for life insurance, it's not doing 50% on each. JMB asks that the property is um, the life insurance is on the complete value of the loan. And so what happened if the two people die together? We get by the, what, we get by the extra money, what happens then? <laughs> well, we'll only need one policy to liquidate the loan. So the other policy will be able to go to the beneficiary. Ah, so yeah. two of us die. God forbid. One person is paying, you know, yes, God forbid, but it can happen. True. You're saying one policy will pay the loan, mm -hmm. the rest goes to the beneficiary. Beneficiary, yeah. Because we wouldn't right. We wouldn't need the two funds to close on the same loan. Correct, Keisha. All right. So we love the questions, them coming in, Sheena, quick and fast. We have some very attentive students. Mm -hmm. They not make nothing miss them, right? So Brittany is asking. If both my spouse and my name are on the property and one of us dies, does the other person have a continue payment? That's what she's asking. Say that again. If both of us are on the property, one dies. Right, she and her husband, the mm -hmm. husband dies, does she have to continue paying? No. Payment? Because if the husband dies and he would have had insurance, so that insurance will be used to liquidate the loan. So no. Ah. Mm -hmm. See, it's gone clean, Brittany, mm -hmm. right? No more payments because the right. loan would have been paid off. Insured. Mm -hmm. Insured, so it paid That's off. good. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right, so we love these terms. We like the flexibility. For persons then who may want to reach out to JMB and say, I love this bank, want a mortgage here, or at the very minimum, I need my pre-qualification. Because these days, you can't ever go look on a property. You can't ever say, Roar! Out of real estate, <laughs> unless you have your pre qualification, that right? The pre, pre qualification letter. So, we're gonna bring up our QR code because there may be persons here who say, You know, I need that pre qualification so that they can scan it. We're gonna get the list, send it over to Sheena and our team, and say, All right, let's get you all hooked up with pre qualification letters so you know your amount. 
you know, also say, look here, if the number low, I would not say it can't buy nothing. We will help you and give you some strategy they can use to increase the amount that you can afford. Mm -hmm. So there's a QR code. Also, Sheena, is there another way persons can reach you directly? Sure. Um, may I go ahead and give my email address here? Sure. So it's Sheena, S-H-E-E-N-A, underscore Watson, that's W-A-T-S-O-N, at jmmb.com. Nice. So QR code or Sheena underscore Watson at jmmb.com. We know office get connected there. All right, Sheena, anything else you want to leave on Morgan? Is there anything you think, well, students have to know this? All right, so the mortgage does require you to have some money up front. It's important. So other than just knowing what you qualify for, you must, 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 must have some funds. Are they going to have some investment that's around about to be matured? Well, you will need some, some money to start this process. And my, my tip is you usually need anywhere from between 10 to 15% of the deposit. Because between JMMB and, say, the NHT, if both of us are going to assist in purchasing the property, we only assist 95% of the value of the property. So it means that you must have your minimum 5% ready at all times. And your other fees. Um, sometimes persons say, you know, they're unable to afford it and they may need to take a loan. So while we can assist with a loan, it negates from the amount that you would actually qualify for. So my tip is be prepared, have some funds, start saving if you haven't started already, but you must have some money upfront when you're thinking about purchasing a property. All right. So save mm -hmm. towards that. But yeah, you mentioned a little strategy. We we'll have to go into that more. You say some people borrow money for the deposit. They borrow yeah. it, deposit, and then take a more. So they don't put any of their money. They, they, they don't. They may be money the whole time. Other people money, which is what we're talking about, right? There mm -hmm. are things that happen. A lot of people don't know these things are out there. Right, yes. it can hurt you, as you said, because it reduces how much you can get for your mortgage. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the maths can maths, maybe. Correct. Because if you can afford it, then sure. Mm -hmm. If you, say it again, Sheena. I said if you can if you can afford it, then fine. We can assist with the deposit and also the financing of the mortgage. Talk the things. So persons can reach out then to go say, can I qualify for borrowing the deposit plus the mortgage? That is good. All right, Sheena, thank you for being with us on tonight. Pick right, up yourself. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And we'll talk, Keisha. All right.